Hey, what's up guys, Darius here. Uh, I hope you enjoy all the tutorials I make on my YouTube channel. Thank you all again for all the support. Making YouTube videos for me is like a hobby and uh, I didn't actually know that this would turn so well. Like so many people are watching my tutorials and subscribing to me every day. It's a bit overwhelming, I won't lie. Oh, by the way, I am writing a book. It's called um, A Baka's Guide to Photoshop. And uh, it's basically a book with all the tips and tricks that you need to get you started into Photoshop. Not sure if I will uh, charge for it or if I will uh, give it away for free. But even if I charge for it, it would be like, I don't know, $1 or so, uh, nothing huge. Anyway, today we have the start of a new series called uh, Photoshop 101. And uh, it will be divided in uh, quite a, a few parts. And if you're wondering what it is, it's uh, basically a series where I explain every tool in Photoshop. Gradients, layer styles, pen tool, layers, patterns, actions, and many, many more. This will bring you back right to the basics and uh, teach the veteran users something new, maybe along the way with uh, the beginners who are also learning from it. I will try to put one video a day or uh, every one every two days so we can do this fast. So that's it for the uh, update. Let's pass on to Photoshop 101 Part 1, Optimizing Performance. Now the newer versions of Photoshop are really demanding. So for someone that hasn't upgraded their PC yet, it can be a pain in the ass to do regular stuff in Photoshop. And people in this situation are usually stuck with uh, older versions of Photoshop. But this is also a tutorial for the people that have strong PCs. So let's head on into Photoshop's Preferences menu by clicking the Edit item here and then going to Preferences and then General. Let's click on Performance first. So what do we change here? As you can see, I have my memory usage set to uh, 69%, which is within the ideal range that Photoshop is telling me right here. Make sure you don't pass your ideal range, otherwise the RAM that you use for your applications and the RAM that uh, Photoshop is using may clash together and uh, it's going to make your computer and Photoshop run much much slower. You would think that increasing the RAM would actually make Photoshop run smoother and faster but this isn't the case. You just have to be in between the uh, ideal range. Now we have the scratch disks. Now sometimes Photoshop needs to uh, needs more resources than you have. Photoshop may run out of RAM and then it will search for a place to get resources. And it takes the resources from your hard disks. As you can see, I have two drives, C and D. I let Photoshop use both so that when I run out of RAM to process a big file, it takes space from those two and finishes the job. I got enough space, so uh, it's not a problem for me. I would really recommend buying an external hard disk uh, if you don't have much RAM to run Photoshop smoothly and then that uh, external hard disk can act as food for Photoshop to use when uh, it is resource hungry. Let's just put it that way. Okay, next we got history states and cache level. Now the history states are how many times you can undo. So if I set this to 2. Whenever I edit something, I can go back only two times. The lower you have it, the better. Photoshop actually makes a temporary file which basically stores all the information that you are working on inside your current project. By lowering the history states, you're telling Photoshop, hey, I don't want you to remember this information, it's just a waste of space. So the lower it is, the more this space you will save. However, if you have a big hard disk like I do, I like where this is going. Giggity, giggity, giggity. Then you shouldn't worry that much about it. But just leave it to 20 by default so you don't run into any slowdown problems. Now, the cache levels, you can just leave that at, as 4. If you work with small images most of the time, then set it to 2. If you work with large images, then set it to 6 or higher. This will improve the image handling. The cache tile size, you can just set it to whatever suits your needs. The bigger the tile size is, the faster Photoshop processes an image. I set it at 132K because I noticed that Photoshop starts a bit slower with the tile at uh, 128 or um, at the uh, 1028 or 1024. 
I still have to look into that. I'm not sure if it's an issue or uh, if this is normal behavior. I don't remember it replicating in uh, CS5. Yeah, CS6 still has a few bugs that uh, need to be fixed, but I'm sure Adobe will fix that in the future. Okay, now once you're done with this, you can just uh, click OK. I'm going to cancel because I already have my settings. And uh, make sure you restart Photoshop after that. But uh, first, let's uh, fix a few more things. Let's go to our top menu here for a second. Don't you just hate it when you click on uh, the text tool here and it loads so freaking slow? That's because your font preview size is too big. Click on the type here and then go to font preview size and set it to small. And this is going to load your fonts much, much faster. So when next time that you click your uh, text tool, it will load much faster than before. Now remember that in uh, Photoshop CS5, you, has, you have this option in Edit, Preferences, and then Type. And uh, it's going to be uh, here under somewhere, and in CS6 you have it here uh, in your uh, Type panel here. So, uh, and then just click OK once you're done, and uh, then you can just restart Photoshop so that all the settings that you did to your Photoshop to make it faster are applied, and you can start using it. The last tip I can give you is to upgrade. Upgrade your PC if you are really serious about getting into uh, graphic design. Buy a new RAM, buy a new graphic card so you can just keep up with the latest versions and so on. This is the end of Photoshop 101 Part 1. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little guide to uh, making Photoshop faster. Make sure you subscribe and uh, like this video. See you guys in Part 2. Cheers!